Hello friends, Adam here with FED. I'm thinking about fan service in the series, when it really started, like where it really appeared, you know, first, and how it's influenced the series, and especially following Awakening going forward, right? So I looked up the definition of fan service, and you know, you find they're, they're all you find some different definitions depending on where you look or, or um, if you see them like Urban Dictionary or whatever. But essentially what it comes down to is it's content put into some source of media to uh, specifically to pleasure or excite the viewer or player, right? Um, and, and it says uh, 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 often in the form of, of sexualized content, right? So that's what people usually consider fan service. But I think I want to go with like the broader term of something that's put into the game to make the player feel good, right? aside from like the accomplishment of beating a game or the fun gameplay uh, that you would find you know so I, I think a game that's like devoid of a fan service I think a good example is like Super Mario World right it's like devoid of fan service it's all about gameplay and just getting better at the game and have, finding success and enjoyment in completing levels right I think you could say the same for like the first Zelda game, right? Where it's not about, you know, saving the girl to get some weird fan service reward. It's about saving, it's about adventuring and discovering and stuff like that. And I think that's really, uh, I, think that's, I, I honestly think that's really cool personally. But Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem is a game series that naturally lends itself to being like a, a fan servicey kind of experience, right? Because you have because <clears throat> you have all these characters that interact with each other and have their own like interpersonal uh, connections, relationships, and stuff. And there's a lot of room to put in uh, fan servicey content, you know, stuff that makes the player feel good. Whether it's like a relationship that you want to work out that does. Or, uh, in the case of, like, later games in the series, like Awakening or Fates or Three Houses to some extent. Um, you know, a character who is dressed provocatively. Stuff like that. I think because it's so character-focused and character-driven, that there is a lot of opportunity for fan service. And thinking about it, I can't really think of any hardcore fan service that you see in the first three games in the series. Maybe you could say something to the effect of, uh, you know, Marth ending up with Sita could be like a fan servicey thing, but I think that's just a, a story thing more than anything. I don't think that was in place to like make the player feel good or anything. I think that was just the, the narrative that they wanted, you know. And I think you could say the same for Gaiden with Almond Celica. I don't think that is fan service. I think it's just like the like what the the writers had is like predestined. And again, they're any, it's an NES game, so it doesn't really come across as like fan servicey at all. Um, in, in contrast to that, you have like Echoes, right? Where that game, uh, aside from some design changes, and again by design I mean character design changes and stuff, uh, things like Sonya, um, that are obviously meant to be like a fan servicey kind of design. You have the inclusion of Faye, right? Who is in love with the main character. And will do anything for the main character, regardless of any like unrequited feelings, right? And that is a very fan servicey thing that they added to Echoes, or added to Gaiden, I should say. But moving on from there, you look at like FE4, and obviously that's some fan servicey stuff, right? You get to like pick pairings and uh, who go together uh, that that you would like, but that even that felt more gameplay oriented, right? There wasn't like, there were a f couple of conversations here or there that were there just to please the player, right? Just like fan servicey kind of conversations, where, uh, for instance, if you have like Azale and Tell to you uh, if they get married in the game, and again, it's more gameplay focused. It sounds really corny and like like Sims kind of stuff, but it's not. Um, but if they get married, they do have one conversation. Um, that I can think that I, that I remember off the top of my head, and like a lot of the characters do, but like them in particular have like a a, a touching conversation. 
that I guess you could could, could consider as like fan service or purely fan service because it doesn't really service the plot that much and it doesn't really service um, the gameplay at all. It doesn't like give any stat boost or anything like that. It's just there to make the player feel something, right? And you see that all throughout FE4 where there's a lot of conversations that they put in the game to expand the story, but also it just kind of feels like they wanted to put something in to make the player uh, happy or to feel good or to uh, kind of put themselves in the position of these characters, right? And I, I'm hesitant to really call that fan service because, again, it does feel like it's more of a narrative and a narrative thing. But it's uh, they didn't have to put it in there. It doesn't really push the plot forward or, or anything like that. It does feel like these these moments that are are meant to to excite the player in some way or another. Now moving on to the GBA games, I think FE Seven or Blazing Sword or Blazing Blade, depending on who, on who you ask, were just Fire Emblem in America, right, or outside of Japan. I think FE Seven has the first real instances of fan service or fan servicey moments in the series where you have your avatar character it's it's mark by default but you can name them whatever you want and they wake up and you have the i i, I, I would call it iconic you know it's pretty that's a pretty iconic scene in fire emblem right it's the a lot of a lot of our first experiences with the the series where Lynn is they have like the little little graphic of Lynn holding like the bowl of soup or something to give to the 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 past out avatar character mark you know it's that's like 100% fan service like oh here is a a anime woman who is feeding you, like, or giving you food, and she's taking care of you. It's like, that's a fan service moment for sure, right? Like, no one's gonna argue me, argue with me on that. And then there's tons of times where she uh, directly talks to the player, and it's obvious, like, it doesn't service the plot or anything. It, it does, it's not necessary at all, to the point where you can play the game without an avatar character, right? And it doesn't change much. <laughs> so... I think that's at least, uh, I, th I think that's our first real foray into purely fan service elements just to make the player feel good. It doesn't service the plot or the gameplay really in any way. There's just an avatar character so that the, char the player can feel like they're part of the story and feel something. Following that, I think you have some, uh, I think there, to a lesser extent, you have like the supports in the GBA games that do this, and I guess you could say that also like the supports in, in Path of Radiance have some of this kind of stuff too. Those have gameplay stuff uh, built into them as well in Path of Radiance and in the GBA games, but it, it's, it's more about the conversation, right, and more about the learning about the characters, and there's definitely fan service moments and all of that. Radiant Dawn has some as well. I think the character designs up to this point in the series have been pretty tame there are a few that are definitely meant to be provocative in some way or another i think in general uh villains would be the more uh more provocative side of the series you know kind of like the bad the bad guys would be dressed i n never super like immodest or anything but would definitely be uh i don't know more uh, buxom, you know, like in certain areas. If you know what, if you catch catch my drift. And it really isn't until we get to Awakening where it's really like hardcore, you know, with, with that with that side of things, with the 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 character designs. But Fe12 or Heroes of Light and Shadow or. Fire Emblem, New Mystery of the Emblem, Heroes of Light and Shadow. Longest title in the series, so long. Uh, Japanese exclusive that we have a good English translation for now by, uh, by the fans. Uh, FE12 is just like blatant fan service. Blatant fan service. There's an avatar character that's inserted, and that's supposed to be like your self stand in, right? You're, you're it's supposed to be you in the story, you know, if you look at it that way. And it is egregious how often they say, oh, wow, 
avatar character you are amazing i love you so much you're the best off oh, it weren't for you we could never have done this never mind and it's to the it's to the detriment of the story too right it takes marth from being this like incredibly cool character who is just like he he it takes him it takes him from like the super omega commander leader god among men status that i feel like he kind of he kind of develops and gives it all to this avatar character to to chris is the default name and i'm not here to complain about that i'm just saying that that is i think our first like really egregious use of fan service in an attempt to make the player feel good about themselves and to get the uh it's really just there to boost sales right it's not there to improve the story or improve the gameplay if anything chris kind of ruins the the gameplay and not ruins but makes it way easier and lessens the impact of some story moments yeah so that's all that's why that's all there right and then we get to awakening and, and fates and and three houses where i don't think i really need to talk much about the fan service in these games i think most of you have played these you know from the the the, produ the provocative skanky outfits to the to the the avatar character loving and and over the top worship of the avatar character player worship it just gets a little a little intense so so fan service i feel like fan service has been in the series lo like longer than people want to admit i think it's been a big part of fire emblem in general i think it's just gotten really bad or I said egregious earlier, and I think that's a good term. I think it's just, it's over the top now. I think it's just too much. It's too much, and it needs to, uh, I, I just wish Fire Emblem would focus more on the narrative and the gameplay like they used to, rather than being so focused on making the player feel something uh you know be titillated or something like that you know to be excited or or you know have some and they, like all the over sexualized characters and 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 all the weird ugh, character designs that i just can't stand fire emblem is probably just going to keep being that way though right because it sell it, so, it sells well awakening sold really well fate sold really well uh, my understanding is that Three Houses sold really well. I even think Three Hopes across like a million uh, million units sold, which is crazy. People like this kind of stuff. You know, it's, it's, it's easy to sell. But it makes me kind of sad. Which makes me, you know, it makes me think of other games, other strategy games um, that you think would appeal to Fire Emblem fans as well uh, that didn't do as well. In, at least from what I saw. Like, like triangle strategy there the fan service and that is like basically non-existent uh, not non-existent there's moments but it's just like a really uh, it's a it's a character driven drama and uh with fun with fun strategy gameplay but it's never going to be as popular as like three houses because it doesn't have the fan service elements right or uh this, this new game coming out soon, Dio Field Chronicle, honestly seems really good. And I think a lot of people would enjoy it. It's a fun twist on real like real time strategy and uh, turn based tactics. I think it's a fun twist on that from the demo that I've played at least. But I don't think it's going to sell well. It doesn't have the fan service that people like, which is sad, you know. It has beautiful. I love the character art. You know, not not the character models are fine. It's a design choice. People don't like it, but I think they're okay. But the character art is like is beautiful. Um, the overall style of the game is really fun, and, and and I think it's good. The voice acting so far has been pretty good as well. I'm just impressed with what I've seen in that. But it's not going to do well. It's or not as well. You know, I mean, it has it has the Square Enix name attached to it you know the company name so i think that automatically means it's gonna do okay um but it's not gonna it's not gonna you know break any records it's not gonna sell like three houses did it's not gonna sell like awakening did and it's sad to say but i do wonder and i do think it might be a part uh the fan service is a part of that but or lack thereof but those are just my thoughts 
this is a really long rant. Um, I'm sorry. I think I'm, I'm not. And I'm not going to like edit this much. I think I'm just going to kind of leave it. This was just my thoughts that I've been having um, about this topic recently. Um, I recently finished Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And by recently, I mean like last night. And I've been having, you know, that game is littered with 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 skanky designs and, and borderline just, ugh, just horrible designs, dude. And I thought about it. Like if it weren't for the awful character designs, would it have... Like, would it have sold as well? Maybe not. Um, would it, but would it be seen like more favorably by people who did play it? Maybe. It's it's a weird balance that you have to find. And I think Fire Emblem kind of has found that balance where there's a lot of fan service, but it doesn't necessarily detract from the experience, overall experience of the game. Where I think Xenoblade Chronicles 2 had that issue where there's tons of people who will never play that game just because of the character designs. And I get it. I was like that for the longest time, and I only bit the bullet and played through it because of uh, because Xenoblade Chronicles 3 came out, and I wanted to play 2 first. So, yeah. Kind of kind of interesting. Kind of got to find that balance. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think fan service is bad for the series? Do you think it's over the top? Do you think it needs to, to cool down? Or do you think they've kind of hit a, a good balance for something that has... Like, if it has to be there to sell the series so we can get more Fire Emblem games, like, I guess I'll live with it kind of uh, an opinion. Or do you think it just needs to be done? Or do you think it's over the top and gross and evil and bad? Curious to hear what you think. And, of course, of course, uh, subscribe to the channel. And please like the video before you leave. Thanks for watching, guys.